everyone so today we're gonna do a video um what i had been learning the past couple of weeks that was really 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 profound and powerful so for anyone that knows on this channel that um i had been standing on healing for quite a long time and um It was quite a few weeks ago. Um, I'm doing better now, but I had started experiencing physical symptoms again at one point. And I really was talking to God about this topic. Um, you know, what happened? Why was I experiencing this again? You know, did I do something? And one thing that kept coming up was when I had realized the fear that I was carrying of how God would receive me in heaven one day. And you guys know, if you've been on this channel, I had had this anxiety that you know, God would be you know, just waiting to get mad at me for something that I did or said or that he would reject me somehow. And God had showed me that one night that um, that fear was not from him. And the moment that I realized that, it was like that fear just broke off and I started feeling better physically immediately. But I thought I had addressed that fear. And so pretty much at any time, kind of the past couple of weeks that I had been sick, I was brought back to that fear over and over and over again. It's like it was staring me in the face repeatedly. When I would feel bad, I would be in that place of fear again. And God really had to repeatedly show me that in a way where I actually addressed it and didn't just, you know, think I addressed it and then, you know, you're still carrying it because that feels safer, per se, than letting go of that fear. <coughs> and I say this because I know that there, um, there are people on my channel, maybe a couple, where you have held this fear that God is going to reject you for something one day. I want you to understand, you know, it's similar to me being able to relate to it. That fear is not from God. No matter what you've been taught, no matter the verse that has been used, um, to lead to that fear. And I want you to understand it weighs very, very, very heavy on us physically. See, here's what happens, you know, physiologically, that fear is not healthy for our bodies to be in. But then spiritually, fear can give the enemy a foothold in our lives. And I want to minister to you that to understand how that fear is weighing heavy, perhaps on you physically, 
as someone that I've lived in it for 22 years. Questioning if it's from God. I can't believe I lived like that for so long. There are many of us that do that, though, because of what we've been taught. And so I just want to remind you, as God was reminding me the past couple weeks, that that fear is not from him. There's a verse that keeps coming up, and it's David. And it's from the Psalms, and it says, you know, um, David is talking about God, and he said, he, he shall uh, redeem me from the power of the grave. He shall receive me. <laughs> There's another verse, a couple other verses. I believe it's Psalm 47, 48, somewhere around there. Um, it's like after Psalm 46. But it says, this God is our God forever and ever. And then here's another verse coming up. Jesus says, The Son abideth in the house forever. <laughs> and abide means rest. You can search that. Um, it's an Exodus, but I can't remember the chapter, so you're just going to have to search Exodus. Um, here, I'll do it for you guys. Okay. It comes from Exodus sixteen twenty nine. My phone is <laughs> there. We go. This says this. See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. When we see Jesus as a son, abideth in the house forever. It means a son rest in the house forever and as god was ministering to me rest isn't something that we do it's not an interaction but it's this rest that we have in his house forever i just i think it's so beautiful we have rest in his house forever not because of anything we have done, but because of all that Jesus has done to secure salvation for us. And I use that word secure because our salvation is secure because we did not work for that free gift of eternal life he offers. It's all because of Jesus and the cross. All that he has done in his immense love for us.
when we go to see Jesus one day, we meet the Lord, when we draw our last breath, I had to understand that God is going to welcome me with open arms. It'll be welcome home. I had to understand that. And many of us, we don't view God in that way. Where when we think about going to heaven one day, we don't think about this this picture of our Heavenly Father welcoming us, His children, home because we are His sons and daughters forever. We have rest in His house forever because of His love for us. <laughs> and this directly connects to that scripture that I shared for this God is our God forever and ever. And so for anyone that has lived in fear of that day, I want you to take in those words that a son abideth in the house forever. And that when we see God one day, he will receive us with open arms. He will welcome us home. Because that is God's real desire, is for us to be with him forever. That he came in the flesh and he died on the cross. So that nothing could ever separate us from his love. <laughs> so as I was talking to God about the topic of healing, I felt God bringing me back to that, to understanding what Christ has secured for me, that he has secured that home in heaven, and I don't have to live in fear of my heavenly father. But again, it's in knowing all that Jesus has done. And this rest we have in Jesus Christ. To understand that. <laughs> and many times those past couple weeks I felt God um, leading me not to necessarily focus on healing but to focus on his love. And it was amazing because the, the day that um, I wasn't dealing with the other physical symptoms, but I had a fever and I was not feeling good. And um, 
I was struggling to fall asleep. Um, I felt God um, leading me to stop focusing on the symptoms and focus on his love for me. And when I started doing that, I felt his peace and I was actually able to fall asleep. And I actually woke up feeling a lot, lot better. But going through the things I did has made me realize that God's love is really essential when it comes to healing, not just healing though, um, but our lives as Christians. That our lives as Christians not being built on any other foundation. But Christ's love. And all that he has done. And I've had times when I've been standing on healing. I've had times where I've tried to do all these different things that I've heard. gotten frustrated because you know when you feel like you're not feeling better then I've had times where I've been brought to this place at rest where I'm just focusing on God's love for me and reflecting on that and where I believe that God's going to take care of me somehow. And in those moments, um, I felt such an immense peace where, you know, I just felt like God was repeatedly leading me back to that place. It's amazing because when I'm in that place of rest, that's when I've actually seen things happen physically in my life compared to when I have been striving now don't get me wrong I'm not I'm not against things like authority or standing in faith or speaking the word of God I absolutely believe in it but I think it's really important that if someone is doing these things that ultimately um getting into a place of rest almost what I would call resting in faith where you're not in a place of striving. But how do you get to that place where you can feel peace in the midst of those situations? And what I have realized is how we get into that place of rest is by really knowing God's love and healing being built on that foundation of God's love. What I feel like happens with a lot of Christians when it comes to the topic of healing is, you know, you're taught different things to do. And, you know, many people, you know, will do all these things. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, you can get in this point of just exhaustion or frustration from striving. Especially if you feel like you're wrestling with faith. <laughs> to believe in healing in the first place. And I believe it can get people into a lot of, just a lot of frustration and ultimately a sense of weariness. I've experienced this kind of multiple <laughs> times. <coughs> And I even don't hugely like speaking on this topic because um, I think it's really important for people not to get in a place of striving um, where you can just feel so exhausted. And when I've asked God about this topic, I've just felt him keep um, mentioning rest and about getting people into a place of rest. 
And that was really huge for me to understand too, because it was in those times of rest where I would feel peace, not weariness and exhaustion, but calm, peace. And ultimately, the reminder of God's love for me. And so as I was thinking about this topic, there were all these words that started coming up as I started reflecting on who God is and his love um, and all that Jesus has secured for us. And I wanted to share this with you. As I was writing, it was very, very powerful. Um, and I couldn't stop reflecting on it and thinking about it. Um, and it was very comforting. <laughs> and so I'm going to share it with you. So as I was writing this, I said, I'm all for learning authority and speaking the word of God. But God has been pointing me heavenward to the heavenly treasure. <laughs> to know his love, that I'm forever held in his love past the day I draw my last breath. Forever, for all eternity, no matter what happens. And to be reminded of that eternal peace when everything feels like it's spinning in chaos around me. And that even when it looks like the darkness will overcome. Because of Jesus, there is hope, not only for tomorrow, but also the life to come. And that is the healing medicine. As I come to understand and have a deeper knowledge of his love, it brings healing to the broken pieces of my heart and wounded areas of my life, restoring peace where there was anxiety and love where there was fear. To know the magnitude of all Jesus has done and his rest and healing grace as I grow in deeper relationship with him and learn I don't have to be afraid of anything when he is with me and I'm completely loved. In his presence there is no shame but is replaced by my loving father's acceptance as I'm brought back to the mercies of Jesus and his perfect infinite love, his arms surrounding me in every moment as I come to the one who is the healer, Jehovah Rapha, the great physician. But this journey is not about seeking the healing, but my eyes being opened to the one who knows my pain and suffering, who bore my brokenness to give me life, that I would know the power of a love that surpasses all else, that gave his life on a cross so that he could reunite me to my maker and the heavenly father and that nothing could ever separate us, me from his eternal faithfulness and the force of his love that is greater than any storm, fear, or power of darkness, my savior, my rescue, my friend, Jesus, my strength in all things, the anchor of my soul who has conquered death, where all my hope is found, and my soul knows true peace, where my heart has a place to rest, my eternal refuge, and my victory. 
So I just could not stop reflecting on this um, as it was just coming up. To get into spiritual logistics per se. <clears throat> um, here's the thing. Healing is designed in a certain way where um, if I go into the topic deeper rather than just talking about um, from a faith standpoint, it's important to know God's love for you. Not be living in a place of fear. Not be living in anxiety that um, you're going to lose your salvation, but to know it's secure in Jesus because he is the one that has obtained eternal redemption for us, as it says. Um, and he was having once entered into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. That's also why I go into these topics on this channel. When you're living in fear of God, not knowing his love for you, I have already explained how it can work spiritually, but it's, it weighs so heavy physically and even psychologically. And that's how else you can know that that's not from God. I want to read this one more time, but I want to read it um, not from a first-person perspective. So as I said, God has been pointing me heavenward to the heavenly treasure to know his love, that we are forever held in his love, past the day we draw our last breath, forever for all eternity, no matter what happens. <laughs> this was such a huge shift to how I've viewed God, to view him in this way that we are forever held in his love. Past the day we draw our last breath. For all eternity, forever, no matter what happens. And to be reminded of that eternal peace when everything feels like it's spinning in chaos around us. And that even when it looks like the darkness will overcome, because of Jesus, there is hope not only for tomorrow, but also of a life to come. And that's the healing medicine as we come to understand and have a deeper knowledge of his love. It brings healing to the broken pieces of our heart and wounded areas of our lives, restoring peace where there was anxiety and love where there was fear. To know the magnitude of all Jesus has done and his rest and healing grace as we grow in deeper relationship with him. And we learn that we don't have to be afraid of anything when he is with us. And we are completely loved in his presence. 
And there is no shame that is replaced by our loving Father's acceptance as we're brought back to the mercies of Jesus and his perfect, infinite love, his arms surrounding us in every moment as we come to the one who is the healer, Jehovah Rapha, the great physician. But this journey is not about seeking the healing, but our eyes being opened to the one who knows our pain and suffering, who bore our brokenness to give us life, that we would know the power of love that surpasses all of us, that gave his life on a cross so that he could reunite us to our maker and the heavenly father and that nothing could ever separate us, us from his eternal faithfulness and the force of his love and that is greater than any storm, fear, or power of darkness, or savior, or rescue, or friend. Jesus, our strength in all things, the anchor of our souls who has conquered death, where all our hope is found, and our souls know true peace, where our heart has a place to rest, our eternal refuge and all our victory. I really hope this video, um, Minister Seen the Way It Did, um, to me, I've been looking for words that can convey and ultimately capture all that Jesus has done and who the Lord is and even who He has been in my life because. I do believe God, just as his word says he is, Jehovah Rapha, he is the great physician. I've seen his healing power in my own life through his love, changing and transforming, healing and restoring what was once broken and shattered in a million pieces in my life and I believe that this time in my life is no different. And I believe through him we have life. As Jesus says I have come that they might have life. But I believe it's so important that we know the love of Christ. We know all that he has done. And this relationship we have through him to know his love. Because to know the love of Christ, that's how we're filled with all the fullness of God, as it says in Ephesians. Is a love that surpasses knowledge. Is a love that surpasses anything, any power of darkness. His grip that is stronger than any mistake or sin. And his love that we can never be separated from. But to know the rest we have, not only in his house, but his love forever. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video ministers to you. I hope you all are, I hope you all are doing all right. God bless you.